system? Can you can you build a strong like say on that Super Duty out there? Can I put a a bigger hydro boost system, something that puts more pressure to the brakes? We modified them internally, but usually it's up in the pump pressure. Okay, up the pump pressure. All right. So you know, the factors on a hydro boost is the pedal ratio, mm -hmm. size of the master, and pump pressure. The brakes are much improved on that, but still, when you know when there's a certain load on that on that truck. I can feel it, even with the better calipers, with the eight piston calipers, I'm not getting enough pressure. It's just pushing right through, still, you know, the same spots when there's a big trailer behind that thing. So the same as it did with the brakes before. Do you? Do you really? Wow. On motor homes and heavy trucks? You want full pressure over your line. You bet. Okay. See, this picture drag racing. When you drop the clutch, all the horsepower goes through the leaf springs or the, or the arms, right? All power pushes the frame forward. When you apply the brakes, you want the rears to pull the frame back. Because we put 80% of pressure into the fronts, the vehicle wants to tow out. That's why you have to tow in on alignment to allow for the rubber flex. Because as soon as the vehicle goes into tow out, it wants to dart. So I always like to put as much rear brake on the vehicle as I can. Got it. Which also takes the heat off the front brakes. If you notice most cars, the front wheels are black with brake dust because mm -hmm. they're putting all the pressure in the front. You see, you know, we did that mostly with trucks and motorhomes because mm -hmm. if they have dual tires on the back, that's where the weight is. Sure, sure, sure. So that's where you want the brakes. So, what's your question? Question. So back to the question. In a proportioning valve, um, I guess I'm under the assumption that a proportioning valve doesn't really change the line pressure from one side of the proportioning valve to the other. It just slows down the, I guess, slows down the immediate line pressure. Like uh, when you stab the brakes, it won't let the same volume of fluid through as quickly, but it still will eventually build up the same pressure on both sides of the proportioning valve. I would assume. No. How, how does it? How does it regulate and keep pressure on one side? You know, we've actually run pressure tests on stock proportioning valves because the pressure coming out of both ports of the, of the master cylinder is always equal. Okay. Whatever the master does, that's equal. So then you have to go down leg to proportion it. Mm -hmm. So normally drum brakes lock up. Disc brakes are not supposed to lock up. That's the issue. So if you get the rears to the point where they're going to lock, you're only at half pressure to the fronts. So that's why they hold the pressure down on the rears to allow the front pressure to come up. To the six, uh, most drum brakes lock at 600 psi. Okay. Disc brakes are only halfway on at 600, so they won't work. It's, once the rear starts sliding, the fronts aren't working. Got it. So they hold the rear pressure down to allow the front pressure to rise. But yeah, these will limit the pressure. We normally we we'll run pressure tests on uh, stock proportioning valves. It's usually 50 percent. Reduction of the rear. Is it? For stock tires. For a showroom vehicle. They go through all the DOT proving grounds tests. Mm -hmm. The vehicle is designed exactly for the, way it's the showroom tires. Now once you make a change, all the rules change. If you put a welding rig on the back of this truck, the rules have changed. Now if you put a welding rig on the back of a car, it wasn't designed for it. But trucks, we have more flexibility.